What's up guys, it's Sean here. You know what's a hot topic in computer science right now? You probably guessed it, machine learning. In fact, neural networks have been becoming more and more applicable with the massive influx of online data and the increased computing power available. A neural network is essentially a universal function approximator which can be trained to model the trends in any set of data. Let's look at some real life examples. A commonly seen application is image classification, where you could train a neural network to learn how a particular alignment of pixels in an image can correspond to a specific digit. You could also have a neural network read in a series of words and then tell you whether the sentiment of that phrase of words is positive or negative. You could even apply a neural network to something as simple as linear regression, which you might have seen in my last video. But what makes a neural network so successful at such complicated applications like image classification? Well, the powerful feature of a neural network is that it gradually optimizes itself by using a smart learning algorithm called gradient descent, which minimizes the overall error of its predictions from the target value by following the downward gradient of the error function. However, for large networks, this algorithm often requires a lot of complex calculus to find the gradients of the error function with respect to each internal parameter. But the good news is that Google created a library called TensorFlow, which will take care of all the gradient finding for you when it's optimizing any network that you build. Wait, hold up. Tensor? What's a tensor? I'm glad you asked. And no, it's not something that makes you more tense. Tensor is a general term for an n-dimensional array of data, but usually where n is greater than 2, since a 2D tensor is usually called a matrix and a 1D tensor is usually called a vector. Anyways, TensorFlow essentially allows you to define any type of network, which is represented as a connected graph that indicates the flow of the network's inputs to its outputs through various mathematical operations like multiplication or addition. All right, so now let's investigate how we can use TensorFlow to create and train our own neural network from scratch. There are three main steps for doing this. Number one, define your network's architecture. This is where you specify how many inputs and outputs your model is going to have, as well as the flow of operations transforming your input to the output. Next is step two, define the error function to be minimized. This is where you specify how the error is measured between the model's predicted value and the target value. This allows TensorFlow to calculate the gradients of each parameter in a backward pass from the output to the input. Finally, step three, start training your network with actual data. So now let's look at an example of a linear regression where I basically want to approximate the function y equals mx plus c for some existing data points. Starting with step one, let's define this as a graph of mathematical operations from our equation. So in TensorFlow, we always start with the input. We then apply each transformation incrementally. So we see that x is first multiplied by a variable m and then the result is added together with the variable c. And that basically just equals y. So now on to step two. So since our error function actually depends on the output of our model, we're gonna extend our existing graph to form the error function graph. The error function for linear regression is the sum of the square distances between the model output y and the target value t. So since our error function depends on the output of our model, we can actually extend our original graph to form the error function graph. So then from y, we subtract the target value, then we square the result, and finally, we sum all the individual errors to get an overall error. This is what we want TensorFlow to minimize. And you might also find that the overall error is referred to as the loss function. All right, so now that we have our entire graph defined, let's think about where our inputs will be coming from when we actually train it. So when calculating the error, we need the values of all the leaf nodes, which are x, m, c, and t. Now, m and c are internal parameters of the graph, whose values we don't update directly, but are instead learned as the graph is being trained. But on the other hand, x and t represent our actual data points, which we need to feed into the network. So these are called placeholders in TensorFlow. Okay, 
So now let's implement step three along with step one and two in actual code. All right, so I'm back in my Jupyter notebook and we'll first import our libraries numpy, random, and pyplot. And then assuming you have TensorFlow installed, we'll import it as such. If you don't yet have TensorFlow installed, I'll put a link to the installation guide in the description below. Um, so then we specify the format for displaying graphs as well as the random seed for getting the same random number. So let's start with defining our input target data pairs that we will be fitting our model to. So with step one, we'll define our network. So we start with our input, which is a TensorFlow placeholder with type float32, and I'll call this as x input. And we can also specify the shape of the data to be given to the placeholder. And we can see that our data is just a 1D array of four elements. So we could set the shape to have four elements in the first dimension, but what if we had five data points instead? Well, then that wouldn't fit in our placeholder of four elements, so I'm just going to change this to none and let the placeholder accept any number of points in that dimension. So we then need to define m and c, which are internal to the graph, so we'll use the function tf.variable. And if you forget what parameters it takes in, we can always just google it. So we can see that we can actually specify an initial value. So I'll actually specify the initial values out here and pass those in. Now let's print these out to see what they actually are. So this is what a raw TensorFlow object looks like, and this is the generic name it's given. So it turns out we can also specify the name to something more informative. So let's do that. Then we combine x and m in a multiplication operation using tf.multiply. And then our y value is just the output of adding the multiplication term and the variable c. So I'm just going to call this y model. So we now have our initial graph, but what if you wanted to test it out to see if it's applying those operations correctly? Well, if I print out y model, it just shows up as a TensorFlow add operation. So to actually get output data, we need to run it from within a TensorFlow session and pass in the input data through the placeholder. So we first create the session with ses equals tf.session and then we can get the output by running ses.run and passing in the operation we want the output of and also a dictionary mapping the input placeholder to the data to pass in. But when we run this, we actually get an exception that our variable c hasn't been initialized. So to fix that, we just need to run an initializer function which instantiates all the variable objects within the TensorFlow session. So now when we run this, it works. And we can also calculate the output directly and we get the same thing. So our graph is correct. Let's also plot the data and our initial model to compare. So now into step two, defining our loss function. So we have our predicted output now, but we need another placeholder to take in our target data. So we'll create that as another tf.placeholder with the same type and shape as the input placeholder. And then we can calculate the signed error as the subtraction of the output and the target. And then we can pass that into a square function to get the square distance. Then finally, we can take the sum of all the individual error values to get our loss function. Now we want TensorFlow to minimize this loss function, so we need to create an optimizer algorithm object from TensorFlow's available algorithms in tf.train. For now, we'll just use the standard gradient descent. This also allows us to set the learning rate, which we'll set as 0.01 as a safe value. And lastly, we create the training operation which will minimize the loss with our optimizer. And that's step 2 done. Now step 3 is really easy. All we have to do is run the training operation over a number of iterations. So this time we need to pass in both the x data and the t data to the network since the error now depends on the outputs model and the target value. And we can also print the updated model after each training round to see it get closer and closer to the true function. So that's pretty much it, but there are a few good practice things that you should probably know when using TensorFlow. So one of them is that whenever you create a session, it's always good to close it at the end to free up any resources that it's using. But a cleaner way to do this is actually with a with statement, 
but this means that with every new block you would need to run the global variable initializer in it. And finally, you can actually get multiple outputs from the ses.run function and so we can move our y model operation in here and get our output as a tuple where train operation just returns none. So you just trained your own neural network using the basics of TensorFlow. And if this all seemed kind of a lot to take in, don't worry, just keep at it and you'll get the hang of it soon. And I'll be making more tutorials on using TensorFlow for more complicated neural networks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to get notified about them. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and also let me know in the comments what other machine learning applications you'd like to see in future TensorFlow tutorials. And until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye.